Blessed Easter to you. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. I want to welcome you here to Zion Lutheran Church in New Palestine, Indiana for our resurrection worship. It is so good to be with you. I want to uh, share a brief announcement before we begin that uh, if you're interested in dropping anything off at the church or picking something up, that Mondays from 9 a.m. to 6 p.m., you can come to the back of the church, the stained glass doors, and if there's something you want to uh, either drop off or pick up, uh, someone will be there for you. You can stay in your car, and we'll take care of whatever you need. So uh, again, uh, welcome here. I was, I have to tell you, I was surprised when I showed up today to see all of your faces here in the sanctuary. But what a joy, and, and what a reminder to us that we are all together in the Lord, gathered around worship, gathered around God's good promises in the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Uh, let us worship together this morning. of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Christ is risen. He, he is, is risen indeed. indeed. Alleluia. The stone is rolled away. Look, the tomb is empty. O death, where is your sting? O grave, where is your victory? Thanks be to God, who, who gives, gives us the victory through Jesus Christ our Lord. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia.
This is the day that the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. I know that my Redeemer lives. And, and that in the end, I shall see him face to face. The Lord has made this day one for rejoicing and gladness because he has destroyed death. We pause in our rejoicing because our sin caused so much pain and agony for Jesus. Assured of the Father's acceptance of Christ's sacrifice for us, let us confess our sins to God our Father. O Almighty God, merciful Father, most, most merciful God, we, we confess that we are by nature sinful and unclean. We have sinned against you in thought, word, and deed, by what we have done and by what we have left undone. We have not loved you with our whole heart. We have not loved our neighbors as ourselves. We justly deserve your present and eternal punishment. For the sake of your Son, Jesus Christ, have mercy upon us. Forgive us, renew us, and lead us, so that we may delight in your will and walk in your ways to the glory of your holy name. Amen. The sting of death is sin, and the power of sin is in the law. But thanks be to God who gives us the victory through our Lord Jesus Christ. As a called and ordained servant of the crucified and risen Christ, and by his authority, I therefore forgive you all of your sins in the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea. The, the Lord, Lord is, is my strength and my song, and, and he, he has, has become, become my salvation. Your right hand, O Lord, glorious in power. Your right hand, O Lord, shatters the enemy. You, you have led in your steadfast love the people whom you have redeemed. You have guided them by your strength to your holy abode. You will bring them in and plant them on your own mountain, the place, O Lord, which you have made for your abode. The sanctuary, O Lord, which your hands have established, the Lord will reign forever and ever. Glory be to the Father and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. As it was in the beginning, is now, and will be forever. Amen. I will sing to the Lord, for he has triumphed gloriously. The horse and his rider he has thrown into the sea.
The Lord be with you. And And also with you. Let us pray. Almighty God, the Father, through your only begotten Son, Jesus Christ, you have overcome death and opened the gate of everlasting life to us. Grant that we who celebrate with joy the day of our Lord's resurrection may be raised from the death of sin by your life-giving Spirit. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen. The first reading for the resurrection of our Lord is from Acts, chapter 10. Peter opened his mouth and said, Truly I understand that God shows no partiality, but in every nation anyone who fears him and does what is right is acceptable to him. As for the word that he sent to Israel, preaching good news of peace through Jesus Christ, he is Lord of all. You yourselves know what happened throughout all Judea. Beginning from Galilee, after the baptism that John proclaimed, how God anointed Jesus of Nazareth with the Holy Spirit and with power. He went about doing good and healing all who were oppressed by the devil, for God was with him. And we are witnesses of all that he did, both in the country of the Jews and in Jerusalem. They put him to death by hanging him on a tree. But God raised him on the third day and made him to appear, not to all the people, but to us who had been chosen by God as witnesses, who ate and drank with him after he rose from the dead. And he commanded us to preach to the people and to testify that he is the one appointed by God to be judge of the living and the dead. To him all the prophets bear witness that everyone who believes in him receives forgiveness of sins through his name. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be to God. epistle comes from the third chapter of Colossians, beginning at the first verse. If you then have been raised with Christ, seek the things that are above, where Christ is, seated at the right hand of God. Set your minds on things that are above, not on things that are on earth. For you have died, and your life is hidden with Christ in God. When Christ, who is your life, appears, then you will also appear with him in glory. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks Thanks be be to God. God. Gospel according to St. Matthew, the 28th chapter. Glory to you, o Lord. Now, after the Sabbath, toward the dawn of the first day of the week, Mary Magdalene and the other Mary went to see the tomb. And behold, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord descended from heaven and came and rolled back the stone 
and sat on it. His appearance was like lightning, and his clothing white as snow. And for fear of him, the guards trembled and became like dead men. But the angel said to the women, Do not be afraid, for I know that you seek Jesus, who is crucified. He is not here, for he has risen as he said. Come, see the place where he lay. Then go quickly and tell his disciples that he has risen from the dead. And behold, he is going before you to Galilee, and there you will see him. See, I have told you. So they departed quickly from the tomb with fear and great joy, and ran to tell his disciples. And behold, Jesus met them and said, Greetings. And they came up and took hold of his feet and worshipped him. And then Jesus said to them, Do not be afraid. Go and tell my brothers to go to Galilee, and there they will see me. This is the Gospel of the Lord.
Happy Easter, boys and girls. It is uh, fantastic to be with you this morning on this Resurrection Sunday. Uh, boy, I, I brought something with me here today. Do you see this? Uh, what do I have? Yeah, it's kind of a heavy rock, right? Do you remember hearing about a rock or a stone in our readings today? I'll bet you do. There was a much bigger rock than this that we're talking about that was in front of Jesus' tomb. It's said that that stone in front of Jesus' grave could have been up to two to four thousand pounds, six feet high and four feet wide. It was a whole lot bigger than this. That stone was there. And do you remember what the Bible says in Matthew? about how that stone got rolled away. Yeah, the Bible says that an angel came down from heaven and there was an earthquake and the angel rolled that stone away. Boy, that wasn't a, a small rock to roll away, was it? But I want you to notice something else with me today. What was the angel doing? Where was that angel when the women came? Was the angel standing alongside the rock? Was the angel still trying to push the rock out of the way? No, the angel was sitting on the rock, sitting there ready to tell everyone about the good news that Jesus is not here, he is risen. You know, everything was accomplished. The angel didn't have anything left to do but to tell because Jesus had died, he had risen again, he had paid for your sins and mine, he gives us new life in his resurrection. And the only thing left to do is, is to share the news, to tell people. And so I want, I want to send you all out today with that same idea. God has done everything for you in Jesus, in his death and resurrection, and we can go tell people about what he has done. Will you pray with me? Dear God, thank you for your death and your resurrection. Thank you for the life that you give to us in Jesus. Help us to tell so many people about your power, about your glory, about the cross, and the empty tomb. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Happy Easter, boys and girls. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Now that uh, Easter greeting we've done here at Zion for years, it's centuries old, maybe even thousands of years old, goes all the way back to that, I think that first Easter, we can hear it in Matthew chapter 28 as the angel is there to say, he's not here, he is risen. Even uh, in Luke chapter 24, we read about Jesus on the road to Emmaus talking with those, uh, those guys and, and, and they run back to the disciples after they recognize Jesus and, and they proclaim to the eleven he has arisen indeed. You know, so as, as we go on here in, in worship, whenever I say Christ is risen, you can respond with, He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Christ is risen. Nice job. What wondrous words that we have to share on this blessed Easter. Christ's resurrection has changed history changed your future. The resurrection has given us real hope, destroyed death, defeated the devil, and given us life. It is good to celebrate with you here today. You know, a virus, a war, persecution, separation, earthquakes, famines, or hurricanes cannot stop the message of Christ is risen. We may not physically be here together today, but we are together in the Lord, in our risen Savior. 
I want to share with you a few things today that we can take away about the resurrection of Christ. The first thing that I'll share with you is this. The resurrection means separated no more. The resurrection means separated no more. In Matthew 28, we read about the women going to the tomb very early in the morning. They, uh, they knew about that stone that was in front of the grave. They knew that that stone was very large. They knew that there would be soldiers guarding the pathway. They knew about a Roman seal upon that stone. Those Jewish women had no power or authority to move that stone away. It would probably seem impossible. Even in Mark chapter 16, we read that the women said, who will roll away the stone for us from the entrance of the tomb? Seemingly impossible, but not impossible for God. For we know that an earthquake happened, the angel descended, and the stone is rolled away, Christ is risen. They were separated from Jesus, but no more. You know, there was a, a stone or a wall or a separation that happened so long ago back in the Garden of Eden. When Adam and Eve partook of that forbidden fruit, there was a wall that went up, the wall of hostility, the wall of sin, separating humanity from God. But God has taken away the stone. The stone has been rolled away. Your sin has been removed, and you now have life with God Almighty. On Sunday morning, August 13th, 1961, the leaders of what what then was called the German Democratic Republic, or East Germany, gave the order for the border between East and West Berlin to be closed. This was the beginning of what would become the Berlin Wall. It was one of the more hated structures around the Cold War. August 13th would be remembered as Barbed Wire Sunday. When the wire and the walls went up, there would be a separation of family members from other family. People would lose their jobs on one side of the wall or the other. Many would lose their lives trying to escape to freedom. But you know what? What comes up must come down because it was on November 9th, 1989. I remember that day. Seven o'clock in the evening, the order was given for the wall to come down, for the gate to be opened. By 10.45 that night, there were so many people gathered at that gate. The soldiers were overwhelmed, and they opened up the gates, and people flooded out into freedom on the west side. Today, Easter Sunday, brings about an undoing of the wall of sin and death and the devil. Even the grave could not hold Jesus. And nothing can keep you out of the kingdom of God. Your sin has been paid. The resurrection is real. You have life. Jesus broke down the wall of sin and death by dying on Good Friday and rising on Easter Sunday. The earthquake that took place on Easter morning, the rolling away of the stone, brought about a change of history and your history. The wall of death and sin was broken down, so now I can walk and live with God each and every day. You know, I look forward. I look forward to the day when that final enemy is truly broken down of death, physical death, and separation from God in the fullest degree on that last day. The Bible says the last enemy to be destroyed is death. When Jesus comes back, death itself will die. Death will have a funeral. 
death will be no more, and we will be reunited with all those who have gone before us. What a marvelous day, separated no more. My second point for you this morning is the resurrection means faith, not fear. Faith, not fear. I think about uh, the time between Good Friday and Easter dawn. The disciples had so much loss that had taken place. They had seen Jesus hauled away, Jesus crucified, a bruised body, dead, placed in the tomb. So much sadness, so much uncertainty, so much fear. Would the Jewish leaders come after them next? What would tomorrow bring? How could they move forward? And then Easter dawn happened. The stone rolled away. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. And new life begins. New hope is dawned. Tomorrow comes with a new future. And when we, we, we are confronted by something that we are not in control of, when something happens that we don't understand, oftentimes we can become afraid. One of the most common commands in the Bible is do not fear. Don't be afraid. There are all kinds of fears around us today. Fears that my loved ones will get the coronavirus. Fears of economic depression. Fears of job loss. Fears of spreading the virus to someone else. Fear, fear, and more fear. I uh, was reading a newspaper article from last week that talked about a doctor who had treated 24 patients in one day. Half of those patients had great anxiety. They were experiencing a lot of stress and worry in their lives. Another 40% of those patients were experiencing physical symptoms in their body. They had rashes on their hands, rashes on their face, irritations in their eyes, hard time breathing, tightness in their chest. And upon further investigation, the doctor discovered that these 40% of those with these symptoms had been excessively cleaning their houses with bleach. They were trying to take care of one problem, but really had created another. They had uh, looked at trying to solve one situation, but in essence then their bodies were dealing with another difficulty. You know, I think when, when we are afraid, when we are out of control, we try to take control, we try to do a lot. It sounds kind of like humanity to uh, try to solve one problem and create 10 more. You know, I, I'm reminded in, after 9-11, so many people were afraid of flying in planes that they started driving everywhere and the number of fatalities and car accidents went up. They tried to solve one problem, but in essence, really created more. There is something for us to grab onto today in the midst of all that is going on, in the midst of all the fear, and that is death is a reality. Death comes about because of sin. I am exposed to death because I'm human, and I am born and conceived with sin, and I am separated from God. But God has brought about a solution. God has brought about Jesus and his death and his resurrection. And in the midst of all this uncertainty and fear, I have the promises of God. I can say with Job, I know that my Redeemer lives. I know that God Almighty is in control. I know that Jesus rose from the dead and promises to make me to rise on the last day. I know that God loves me in Christ and forgives me all my sins for his name's sake. I know, I know, I know God's promises are true. You know, there are people who think today and, and for so much time that there is no more beyond the grave. 
No more beyond the cemetery. No more beyond death. I'm reminded some of you know of and maybe have even been to the Rock of Gibraltar. The Rock of Gibraltar is this uh, large rock jetting out of the waters south of Spain. Legend has it that on the Rock of Gibraltar there was in Latin words this phrase that was ne plus ultra. Ne plus ultra in Latin means nothing beyond. For sailors in the medieval days, they would come to the rock of Gibraltar and they would go no farther west because there was, in their minds, nothing beyond. If they sailed too far west, they'd sail off the edge of the world and be no more. After Christopher Columbus sailed the ocean blue in 1492, that went by the wayside. Spain, the nation of Spain, now has a national motto. You want to know what it is? Their national motto is plus ultra. You can see that on their emblems and flags and even some of their coins. What does it mean? More beyond. We don't have to fear. We can keep on sailing. You don't need to fear because there is more beyond. There is more beyond death. There is more beyond the grave. The gates have been opened to you by the resurrection of Jesus Christ. Christ. You know, if there's anyone out there watching today in your homes, viewing just this message, then the gospel of Jesus Christ is, is coming into your ears, and the Spirit of God is working. And if you uh, maybe have not believed in Jesus in the past, in his death and resurrection, I want to say this to you. There is more beyond, more beyond your life, more beyond your sin and your mistakes, more beyond anything that you've ever done, Jesus Christ is the one, the only one, to give you a hope and a future. That's because Jesus is the only one to rise from the dead. Jesus Christ is the only one to have more beyond. And faith and trust in Jesus, in the crucifixion, and in the resurrection is your more beyond too. God's spirit and God's word is working on you. Receive that gift. It's a gift of faith, God's gift to you. You know, if you're hit by that today, I'd, I'd invite you to reach out to me at Pastor Jason Taylor at Comcast.net because I want to hear from you. I want to hear how God is working in your life because there is so much more beyond. You know, that leads me to my third point this morning. Uh, there is more beyond, and that means, the resurrection means there is an eager expectation of what is to come. Resurrection means an eager expectation. Job says, I know that my Redeemer lives and that after my skin has been destroyed, yet in my flesh, I shall see God with my own eyes, I shall see him. Job is declaring faith and trust in the resurrection. He waits for the day when after death, he rises physically to be with God. Paul, the apostle says in the letter to the Corinthians, let me tell you a mystery. We shall not all sleep, but we will all be changed in the twinkling of an eye at the last trumpet, and we will be changed. Our lowly bodies becoming like his glorious body. Paul points to the resurrection for all. You know, my friends, we are waiting for that day. We know the resurrection is real today. The resurrection gives you life today, but we are waiting for that time when our life is going to be revealed when Jesus returns. We are told to not set our minds on things of the earth, but to set our minds on things that are above. We are to set our minds on the forgiveness and the death and the resurrection that we have in Jesus 
Christ. We know that there is so much to look forward to. You know, I'm waiting. I'm waiting for the day when we'll be able to gather together here in this place to receive the Lord's body and blood together at this altar. I'm waiting for the day when we will have Jesus returning in the sky, waiting for the day when we'll see Jesus face to face. I'm waiting for the day when we'll be reunited with all those who have gone before us, running up, giving those hugs, having those conversations, and being together forever. My friends, we are in a time of uncertainty and fear, a time of waiting. But as Christians, there is a difference for us. We know what is coming. We have a word on tomorrow. We possess a promise from God Almighty. It is resurrection life in Christ. No matter what happens to my bank account, my lung capacity, my job status, or my plans for tomorrow, I know that I will rise on the last day because Jesus rose on Easter Sunday. We may be surrounded by uncertainty and death, but we have the absolute truth of life forever with the Father in Christ Jesus. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. Let us profess our faith using the words of the Apostles' Creed. I believe in God the Father Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, and in Jesus Christ, his only Son, our Lord, who was conceived by the Holy Spirit, born of the Virgin Mary, suffered under Pontius Pilate, was crucified, died, and was buried. He descended into hell. The third day he rose again from the dead. He ascended into heaven and sits at the right hand of God the Father Almighty. From thence he will come to judge the living and the dead. I believe in the Holy Spirit, the Holy Christian Church, the communion of saints, the forgiveness of sins, the resurrection of the body, and the life everlasting. Amen. Rejoicing in the resurrection of our Lord and sharing in his peace, 
Let us pray to the Lord on behalf of ourselves and all people as they have need. O risen Savior, set free our tongues to confess your resurrection before a world still captive to sin and death. Give us courage to go to every place and to speak in every language the salvation won for us upon the cross and the hope granted to us of life that death cannot overcome. Lord, in your mercy. O risen Savior, make us to burn with the fire of your love, that we may love you above all things and love our neighbors as ourselves. Deliver us from fear and relieve the anxiety of our hearts, that we may live out fully the hope planted within us and the new lives we received in the waters of baptism. Lord, in your mercy. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of our President, our Governor, Congress, and all state and local elected officials. Guide them according to your word that their labors of our nation's health and welfare may not be in vain, nor forgetful of the vulnerable, aging, and unemployed. Be with all medical, hospital workers, first responders, and last responders. Use them to bring health and peace to your people. Lord, in your mercy. O risen Savior, hear us on behalf of those who cry to you in any need, especially the sick, the suffering, the disabled, the wounded in spirit, those who suffer mental illness, and those in their last days on earth. We pray especially, Lord, that you would be with June Brutcher, Pastor Noel, Bob Waterman, Verna Raisner, Chris Randall, those impacted by this coronavirus, Phyllis Kenworthy. We pray for these and others on our hearts and minds this day. Grant them your grace according to their need. Sustain them in their afflictions, we pray, O Lord. And we ask also, Father, that you would bless little Rowan, born to Mindy Curtis, with your health and well-being, and bring her to the waters of baptism. Lord, in your mercy. O risen Savior, accept the sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving from our lips, and the tithes and offerings we bring this day. Increase in the hearts of your people, delight in your mercy, gratitude for all your benefits, and eagerness to support the mission of your church in word and deed. Lord, in your mercy. All praise to you, dear Father in heaven, for you have opened up to us the way of eternal life in the resurrection of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ. We give you thanks for all those who have gone before us in the faith and now rest from their labors. Keep us in that same faith and embolden us by your resurrection to be fearless in the face of disease, chaos, loneliness, and every sorrow of this world. Give us, with Job, the solemn expectation to cheer us. Our Redeemer lives, and we too shall be resurrected and glorified to live with him in his kingdom forever. Through the same Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, our resurrected, risen Savior, who lives and reigns with you and the Holy Spirit, one God, now and forever. Amen.
Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Christ is risen. He is risen indeed. Alleluia. This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. The Lord bless you and keep you strong in resurrection faith. The Lord make his face shine on you and graciously let Easter joy dawn within you. The Lord lift up his countenance upon you and give you peace here in time and in the courts of heaven forever.